and cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face you were content to let me shine that your way you always walk a step behind See, I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength Yes, you were Only a face without a name
your middle friends wave, wave. Good evening, Greater Second. What a blessing it is to be back in another Bible study. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, has gotten to be uh, a good time to sit and watch YouTube and have Bible study in the presence of your own home. And I'm just so grateful again for our media staff, uh, uh, Minister Jason Wrightow, for making this uh, viewing possible. And let's continue to keep our media ministry uh, uplifted in prayer because we are here for the duration of the winter months. And so far, uh, we've enjoyed what we are doing and also what we are viewing. Uh, would you take the time now to bow with me in a word of prayer as we remember as we pray one for another. Most gracious and almighty God, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for all your blessings that you have so graciously bestowed upon us. And Lord, as we come uh, to this part of the ending of the year, the month of December, we're so grateful and thankful for you bringing us all the way and we just walk by faith, believing that you're going to bring us through the entire year of 2023. And we just praise you and thank you. Oh, Lord, we lift up those who are sick and shut in. We thank you for how you have provided for those who have lost loved ones and that was funeralized uh, last week. And we just thank you for the rainy family. We thank you for the life of Mother Linda Tollfree. We just continually pray strength for those two daughters and all of the relatives now and comfort them. Then, Lord, we lift up uh, Felicia and her family. We lift up uh, uh, the Right Out family and all to you, Lord, as we make ready to uh, have the home-going service of Edward. We we ask you now to grant comfort and strength to that family and uh, help Auntie Ruthie uh, still live by faith and give her the comfort that she need uh, during these times. Be with the entire family and help them, O oh Lord, to realize that we walk by faith and not by sight. Help them to love one another and care for one another. And we just thank you now. Uh, for those who you've allowed to come out of the hospital and back with their families now. We continually pray for uh, our daughter, uh, Beverly Shea, as she recover from her back surgery once again. We just ask for uh, your healing power in her life. And strengthen her and thank you for her husband and how he's helped taking care of her. And Lord, we just thank you for the Greater Second Baptist Church family and as we go through this month, help us to have joy and gladness in knowing that uh, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And that once we were, and now we're saved. We thank you now. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we pray. Amen. All righty. Uh, let's go in. Let me... Let me share with you that I sat and I watched and viewed with my wife uh, last week's message, and, and uh, I had uh, the devotional period during the song and, and in my recliner, and she in her recliner, and we just sat there and enjoyed the service, and I just want you to know I'm grateful uh, for this area of technology. You know, I was one of the late ones to come on, and I'm just grateful for Minister Wright out and how he has blessed Great Second in making it possible for us uh, to have uh, worship online. 
Now, I want to encourage all of us. Uh, let's go ahead and worship. We're finding out that we can worship the Lord in our home. Let's make sure that we're not distracted. Let's have our Bibles. Let's study. And let's just enjoy the Lord uh, when we are viewing online. I admonish you, encourage you, try not to let it be uh, eating time. But if you need to uh, have a sip of water, a cup of coffee or something, I think we can allow that. But I do not want us to get so comfortable with our uh, Bible study and our morning service that we have eating and, and, and make that uh, something that we do regularly while we are viewing. Thank you for tuning in uh, tonight. Let's turn back to the book of Philippians. And we are entering into chapter 4, and you know the book of Philippians does not have but four chapters. So we're in our last chapter, and we're probably going to have at least three uh, lessons, maybe four, in this uh, Bible study book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let's begin with verse 1 of chapter 4. Paul right into the church at Philippi, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads as follows, uh, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Keep in mind now, Paul, Paul starts off chapter 4 uh, with therefore. And you know, anytime there's a therefore, you know this, you need to go back and see what it's there for. So the therefore takes us back at least to the closing of chapter 3. And I want to just help us understand what Paul was teaching as he trans. Uh, as he transferred from chapter 3 to chapter 4 and what was on his mind, and he had just finished talking to us about uh, living in a manner that we are trying and striving to be more like Christ. We're pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. We're trying our best to live godly, but our focus is Christ's likeness. And he said, now be mindful, verse 21, that, uh, uh, well, verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven. We are, we're citizens of heaven, as we discussed last week. Our citizenship, we're already uh, citizens of heaven. Our name has already been recorded in the Lamb Book of Life. And Paul said, now, with that being in mind, we ought to eagerly be awaiting the Savior to come back, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our names is in heaven, our Savior is in heaven, but he's coming back one day to take us to heaven. And Paul said, and as he come to do that, there is coming a time when he will change us. He'll transform our lowly bodies that it may uh, be conformed to his glorious body. We're going to get uh, a do-over. We're going to get a resurrected body. And Paul said, now, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself, he's going to bring us into his presence and conform us to be like him, and he's able to do it. He's able to make us subject him and to be like him. So now with that in mind, with what in mind? With in mind is that we're going to be one day like him. Our body is going to be transformed and we're going to be like him. Paul said, now therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Let me see, can we understand what Paul is saying as we try to break it down a little bit. Uh, therefore, 
Now, therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, Paul reveals his deep affection for the Philippian believers. He says, uh, my beloved and longed-for brethren. The Greek term for longed-for refers to the deep pain of separation from loved ones. Paul is saying now, I, I love you, and I've been separated from you, and I am longing to one day be united back with you. So my beloved and long for brethren, it's amazing how important it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You know how it is when you are away from someone you love uh, for a long while or for a pretty good while or even a, a, a week or a weekend or you go on a trip. Uh, but Paul has been in prison in, uh, uh, in Rome and he writing back to the Philippian church and he's sharing with them how much he loved them and how he longed to uh, be with them, how much he missed them. Uh, I was reminded as I was studying this of how much we were away from one another during the pandemic. And that's the first time uh, I think in our lifetime we probably have experienced a pandemic and experienced the churches being closed. And I came out here almost a year and uh, taping uh, for Sunday morning services. And, and I want you to know there was a longing to come back and be in the fellowship uh, with the brethren in public. And uh, I want us to know that as brothers and sisters in Christ, I underline that that we are family, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, and there ought to be a deep longing uh, to be with one another. There ought to be a love so deep that we have for the brethren. Uh, nothing like uh, probably anything that we can fully comprehend uh, uh, that Paul was longing for because we have not been where he was and been separated like he was, but you can understand what it's like to be away from someone and then having a longing to be back with them. It's kind of like it's going to be uh, when our loved ones has gone to heaven and you are wanting to one day be reunited with them. I long uh, to one day be back in, 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 in the presence uh, with my parents who has gone to be with the Lord. Uh, there is a separation now, but one day we'll be reunited. And Paul is saying that there ought to be a longing for us to be reunited with one another. I want to encourage us at Greater Second Baptist uh, mainly, there is something to this business about loving one another that you and I never want to forget. We don't never want uh, the separation to be something that we look forward to. Uh, never allow for us to depart from being with one another in love and in spirit. And Paul is saying that uh, I long to be with you. I long for you. Uh, also, he says, uh, brethren, my joy and crown. He, 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 he's talking about now that his joy, and listen at this, church, his joy did not come from circumstances. His joy uh, uh, came from fellow believers in Philippi. Uh, let me read something he wrote in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 verse 17 through 20, having this same thing in mind with the Thessalonian church. Starting at verse 17 of chapter 2, Paul says, 
but we, brethren, have been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavors more eagerly to see you face, to see your face with great desire. Therefore, we want to come to you, even I, Paul, time and time again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. Paul looks all the way to the rapture of the church and he talks about how he uh, wanted to come and see the church at Thessalonica time and time again, but Satan hindered him from doing that. And he, he says, uh, but there's coming a time when I will see you face to face and I look forward and I'm longing to be in your presence and I even look for the Lord's coming to make that possible. I read that cross reference to help us understand how much it meant to the Apostle Paul to be in the presence of the brethren and how much he missed them and how he longed to see them once he had been away from them for a while. Let me just encourage all of us, as I said a few uh, minutes ago, a time or two ago, that the love of the brethren. Uh, Psalms uh, say how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Us being together in unity, us wanting to be together, uh, us loving one another in spite of, it ought to bring us joy. And as I say many times, joy is never hooked to circumstances. Joy is hooked and tied to a relationship. So the Apostle Paul said, brethren, my joy, and my crown is you. Uh, much of what we do in the body of Christ has so much to do with love for one another. If we always remember that we are in the people business, there are other things that we'll have to do. We'll, uh, 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 the food ministry, the, all of those different ministries, the, but it's all about people. If people are not involved, then ministry is not needed. Ministry is a life touching a life. And so our joy ought to be the believers in Christ. It gives me joy to serve uh, here at the Greater Second Baptist Church family. You hear me talk uh, so much about it, and you may be tired of hearing it, but I don't know, do you know how much it means to me to have a church home and, and to have a place where I have served and have relationships now that's 45 years old and being able to, to have a deep uh, a love for the believers in Christ, especially these of the Greater Second Baptist Church family. And I just want to encourage us I want to admonish us, love ye one another. Be glad to come into fellowship. And when we, when we come together on Sunday morning and we shake hand or we hug or we dap or whatever we do now as we greet one another, greet one another with joy and gladness because we are a family. And Paul uh, called the Philippians brethren. And he said also, uh, my crown, you are my joy and my crown. Now crown, uh, a crown has reference to rewards. Paul said now, when you, uh, uh, back in the uh, Greek days, there was games, Olympic games and stuff, and there was always a wreath or crown given uh, to the winner. And Paul looks at 
his life and looks at the service to the church and to God's children and his apostleship and, and, and him starting the churches and being the father of so many uh, churches and his love for the brethren, he looked at that there's going to be a crown that he will receive. I think you remember it in 2 Timothy, don't you? Uh, 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 where he talked about I fought a good fight and I finished my course and now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness not only for me but for all of those who love his appearing. Paul looks at that there is a reward awaiting those who serve faithfully those who love uh, deeply those who give generously those who witness uh, 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 constantly, those who are about soul winning, there is a crown that God has, there is a reward that God will give to those who faithfully serve him. And Paul said, not only for me, but for all of us who love his appearance. Do you love the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back to take the church out of this old world and Take us home to be with him. Are you looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ, what we call the rapture? Uh, that verse one is just, just full. Let me give two more verses uh, as we try to conclude this. Paul said now, verse two, I employ uterus, Udia, and I employ Scythia to be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, these two women, according to all the commentary that I read, these two women were prominent uh, church members who may have been among the women's meeting for prayer uh, as Paul uh, started the church and preaching the gospel in Philippi back in Acts chapter 16, verse 13. Uh, apparently, these two women had a disagreement and that was leading to two different factions in the church. And more than likely, more than likely, it's possible uh, that the conflict was personal. It's amazing how many times the body of Christ will allow personal conflict to get into the church. And Paul now em implore these, uh, the church to get these two women uh, back in unity. Whatever the conflict was, it was not one that was God ordained. God is not a God of confusion. God is never one that brings about uh, confusion dissension. Uh, but these two women had some kind of disagreement and Paul said, I implore you to be of the same mind in the Lord. The same mind. Another word is harmony. Uh, to be in harmony with one another. Spiritual stability depends on mutual love, harmony, and peace between believers. I'm going to say that again. Spiritual stability in the church depends on mutual love, one for another, harmony, being of the same mind, and peace between believers. I don't know of anything more dangerous in the church than Satan coming in to bring about dissension, uh, to bring about uh, separation, dispute. And Paul constantly had to admonish churches uh, for to be about unity, to be about staying together. So apparently uh, the disunity in the Philippian church was about to destroy the integrity of its testimony. You don't want nothing to get in the way of our testimony about the Lord Jesus 
Christ. So Paul said, I emerge. Be on the same mind in the Lord. Uh, that's where it all happens, church. Uh, it all happens with us uh, being focused on in the Lord, in the Lord. Uh, that phrase helps us understand that all of us have been placed in the Lord. If it's not about the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're not out here trying to edify and, 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 and exhort and glorify him, then this business is not about very much. And so whatever we do, we want to keep it in the Lord. And he says in verse 3, and I think I'll stop at the end of verse 3, he said, and I urge you also, uh, true companion, help these women who labor with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. The key word here that I want to bring out is companion. He said, I urge you also, true companion. Now, let's look at this word companion and we'll be through. Uh, the Greek word pictures two oxen in a yoke. Two oxen yoked together, pulling in the same direction, pulling the same load. A companion is a picture of a partner or uh, an equal in a Pacific endeavor. What Paul is saying is that the church at Philippi, uh, he urged them because of the dispute that was going on with the two women, and he urged them who are true companions to help these women who labor with me in the gospel. I want to I wanna underline the phrase, labor with me. Paul didn't say they labor for me. Paul said that we are in this together. We are companions. We are yoked up together. And when the church can understand this, uh, that we all serve in different capacities, and uh, the Lord has allowed me uh, to be your humble servant as the under-shepherd under Jesus Christ, but as I lead you, I want us to come along aside me and help me because we all ought to be pulling in the same direction. This is not about me or about you. This is about the Lord. And all of us got to make sure that we understand that we are yoked up together in the Lord. We are, we are partners uh, and we're pulling the same load. And we are working with one another in the gospel. He said, with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Paul said, all of us are together. All of us are working together. All of us pulling the load together. All of us going in the same direction. We are partners in this gospel. We are working alongside one another for the same goal. And also, don't forget, our names is written in the book of life. When did that happen? When did our name get written in the book of life when we got saved? When we became born again, God wrote our names in the Lamb's book of life. We are now his children. We believe in him. We follow him. We serve him. And one day we look forward to being with him. We are citizens in heaven. Our name is written in the book of life. We are on earth, but this place is not our home. We are like pilgrims traveling through here on our way home. And on our way home, we are working together. We are striving together. We are yoked up together. We are pulling this plow together. And we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And let's try to make sure we don't allow no separation to come. We don't get involved in personal conflict. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is one Friday 
he died on Calvary and they buried him and early that Sunday morning he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands and one day he's coming back to receive us unto himself and until that day come he said occupy until I come. Let's serve, let's love, let's witness, let's help and let's do it all for the glory of God who is our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And to God be the glory for the thing he has done. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Hope to see you Sunday morning if the Lord said the same. Be good. Miss Earls used to say, be blessed now. See you soon. Good night.